Speaker Margaret Ken Corda. Um, I'll be speaking to my amendment number 12, is grouped with this one. Um, this discussion of the bill is incredibly timely, I think with soaring food costs uh, for ordinary households, while at the same time many primary producers and smaller retailers are scrambling um, to get by. Amendment number 12 is about ensuring that the new office is empowered to examine and publish issues around the cost of production. The current wording in the bill is too ambig ambiguous and does not explicitly require full and transparent analysis of the true cost of producing food um, that we all consume and that is exported. With this amendment, I'm seeking to ensure that the bill goes as far as it can for farmers, fishers and primary producers. Their work is essential, but too often they operate at a loss or barely get by. But at the same time, food processors, major retailers and wholesalers make massive profits. The government has ruled out legislative measures to intervene in the market to prohibit below cost procurement, uh, where producers get less than what it costs them to produce. And I recognise that this is a really complex area and there needs to be some degree of flexibility to enable negotiations and everyday commerce. But it's disappointing that you're not willing to take the available steps to protect both primary producers and consumers. I'm proposing an approach um, that provides greater regulation in this sector and a more robust focus on unfair trading practices uh, than the bill currently allows for. It's essential that this law goes as far as possible in permitting the new regulatory office to investigate all aspects of the supply chain. It's simply wrong not to mention uns unsustainable that farmers, <laughs> fishers and small scale producers end up receiving less than the cost of their produce from retailers and food processors. Meanwhile, the supermarkets are milking it. And to realise that minister actually raised it at leaders earlier that Aldi in 2021, um, in 2020, made 71% more profit in Ireland than they did in the UK. And we wouldn't be even privy to that information if it weren't for Brexit forcing them to separate their Irish and UK accounts. So like, we have no idea what the other retailers are um, pro doing in terms of profiteering as well. Uh, my amendment helps address this malpractice by requiring the new office to publish annual reports on costs associated with the production of different foodstuffs in order to determine a cost of production. This will be significant in providing transparency and holding big players to account. This type of analysis would help join up all aspects of the food chain. Producers, consumers and policymakers could all see, for example, how much it costs for an inshore fisher to catch mackerel how much they get for that fish, and then how much it's sold for in the shop. Or the same level of detail for sheep, cattle and tillage farmers. This sort of information could be transformative in helping the general public and government understand the real cost of food, as well as the pressure producers are under. Repeatedly during the pre-legislative scrutiny, farming and sectoral groups repeatedly called out for more effective measures to address below cost procurement and greater transparency in our food supply chain. This amendment is a direct response to those concerns and I hope that the government will accept it. Previously, um, Minister, you said that you didn't want the bill to provide a level of detail as it would be too prescriptive. This is exactly the level of direction that is required. This is what primary producers are seeking. This bill is supposed to protect them from unfair trading practices, so we should listen to them. There's a larger point uh, which has not yet been discussed uh, properly in these debates. Our agri-food sector is supported by over 1 billion euro annually of public money, including up to 500 million for CAP, over 218 million for agri-environment schemes and more than 100 million for the beef and sheep sectors. A substantial portion of this investment is designed to support food production directly. For this reason alone, there should be considerably more transparency where is the value for money? Does this investment actually help primary producers and consumers? Because under the current system, it looks like the state is subsidising the large players, basically subsidising the supermarkets when it's at that level. Reduce the cost for the farmer to produce it so the supermarket buy for cheaper and then have no input or control or say around the cost that consumers are receiving at the checkout in the supermarket. Public money is given to farmers, fishers and primary producers, many of whom are just getting by, while at the same time this is not making produce any cheaper for families. It's essential that the regulator has the capacity to examine this whole process. We need to understand how much it costs to produce a kilogram of meat, fish or vegetables. 
how much of that is public money, how much are producers getting and how much are consumers paying, and also, crucially, what is the environmental cost? All of this information is essential to support primary producers, to help families get better value for money and to provide accountability for how public money is spent. My amendment is simply about guaranteeing that the new officer provides us with information on the true cost of producing food. That's all. Surely this is a basic requirement of a body designed to oversee our food chains. It's clear that the bill needs this improvement. There are several amendments grouped together that are aimed at achieving a similar goal, and I would implore the Minister to engage with us. You can't claim that the bill will achieve this in its current form, the level of detail and capacity needs to be supported by legislation. This bill needs to have a strong and unambiguous message. Last week, when I highlighted the flaws in this bill with the Tónaiste, he incorrectly said I did not have amendments. I clearly have, but more significantly, is the implication that his government will be willing to engage with amendments. I urge the Minister to please accept this amendment. to uh, 15 and I think uh, 12 or two together in the same grouping but um, similar to my previous amendment amendment number 15 and my name is about transparency in our food systems the prices the consumer pays in the shop is the result of a chain beginning with the primary producer so we need more structures to guarantee that there is a fair and clear connection between what the consumer pays and what the producer receives the shorter the supply chain the easier it is for the producer to benefit Farmers markets are the obvious example where the consumer directly engages with the producer. The more steps added to this process, the less clear it is who is profiting and by how much. The type of information specified in this amendment is needed to understand how our food systems operate. I specifically call for the new office to be able to access any data that impacts on the price and margins in the supply chain, such as prices paid and received throughout agriculture, produce and margins. This will help show the pressures that farmers, fishers, small-scale producers are under while helping appreciate the logistical, transport and other costs involved in bringing food onto our tables. With food prices rightly in the headlines this week and being discussed numerous times in this House, the need for greater transparency is more and more relevant. Producers, family grocers and consumers are suffering under the current system. This approach will also highlight the inequalities in our food system. If we're honest, there are some primary producers um, that are doing very well and they should be classified as large businesses while there are small retail retailers who are being squeezed by high operational costs. We need a regulatory system that can investigate this complex area and provide the public and government with the information necessary to understand the supply chain. I can't see an argument against ensuring that the new office has access to as much information as possible. Um, I disagree with the government's light touch regulation model. Um, I've argued for this to be a proper regulator, a fully independent office with the capacity to develop and implement regulations without restriction as well as commensurate powers to investigate potential violations and implement the law. The government has chosen to go down a lesser path, so all I can ask is that the office be enabled to access as much information as possible to inform its understanding and its analysis of the sector. <coughs> Amendment 14 from Deputies Coran and Brown sets out to achieve the same objectives as my number 15. Um, in addition, the Minister, who in fairness has engaged with concerns from the sector, has proposed his own amendments to 14. Um, for the most part, I'm happy that you've understood the, the issues raised in the earlier stage and made those changes. Um, so while your amendments are not as robust and far-reaching as I would like, I will withdraw my amendment.